And welcome again to the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with study Bibles, and Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them, for he is Lord of Lords, he is King of Kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. God bless and amen. Now the Nicene Creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was in Incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who spoken through who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And this is our Barnabas study. We are on chapter number nine. The spiritual meaning of circumcision. The spirituality of removing the flesh from from Jewish people. Anyways, now he speaks moreover concerning our words, how he hath circumcised both them and our heart. The Lord saith in the prophet, in the hearing of thy ear, they obeyed me. And again he saith, by hearing those shall those shall hear who are afar off, they shall know that I have, they shall know what I have done, and be circumcised in your heart, saith the Lord. And again he says, Hear, O Israel, for these things saith the Lord thy God, and once more the Spirit of the Lord proclaims, Who is he that wishes to live forever? By hearing let him hear the voice of my servant. And again he saith, Hear, O heaven, and give ear, O earth, for God hath spoken. These are in proof. And again he saith, Hear the words of the Lord, ye rulers of the people. And again he saith, Hear ye children. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, therefore he hath circumcised our ears, that we might hear his word and believe. For the circumcision in which they trusted is abolished, for he declared that the circumcision was not of the flesh, but they transgressed, because of an evil angel deluded them. He saith to them, These things saith the Lord your God, Here I find a new commandment. So not among the thorns, but circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Why speak ye he thus? Circumcise the stubbornness of your heart, and harden not your neck. And again, behold, saith the Lord, all the nations are uncircumcised in the flesh, but this people are uncircumcised in heart. But thou wilt say, verily, verily, yes, the people are circumcised as a seal, as a covenant. But also is the Syrian, but also is every Syrian and Arab, and all the priests of idols. Are these men also, are then they also within the bond of his covenant? Yea, the Egyptians also practice circumcision. Same that everybody liked to circumcise everybody else. It's an interesting, widely practiced event. Now, looking forward in the Spirit to Jesus, practice that right, having received the mysteries of the three letters for the Scripture, saith Abraham, circumcised ten and eight, and then... And then 300 men of his household is a circumcision party. I guess why that's why in the book of Acts it was just such an important issue because it was uh, it was no uh, no joke. They were everybody's running around with a flint knife in their back pocket, I suppose. Now what then was the knowledge given to him in this? 
Learn the 18 first and then, and the 300 and the 10 and the 8 are thus denoted 10 by 1 and 8 by H. You have the initials of the name of Jesus. And because the cross was to express the grace of our redemption by the letter T, he also says 300. He signifies therefore Jesus by two letters and the cross by one. He knows this, who has put within us the engrafted gift of his doctrine. No one has been admitted by me to a more excellent piece of knowledge than this, but I know that ye are worthy. Okay. 10 by, I'm guessing that would be an I, and 8 by H. And you have the initials of the name, Jesus, I, H, T, I, T, H. Interesting, though. Might have to look at that later and try and, try and figure that one a little bit clearer. That's pretty cool, actually. But spiritual significance for and the precepts of Moses respecting the different kinds of food. Now wherefore, now where, now wherefore did Moses say, Thou shalt not eat the swine, nor the eagle, nor the hawk, nor the raven, nor any other fish which is not possessed of scales? Now he embraced three doctrines in his mind in doing so. Moreover, the Lord saith to them in Deuteronomy, And I will establish my ordinances among this people. Is there any, is there then not a command of God that they should not eat these things? There is, but Moses spoke with a spiritual reference for this reason and he named the swine as much as to say thou shalt not join thyself to men who resemble the swine for when they live in pleasure they forget their lord but when they come to want they acknowledge the Lord, and in like manner the swine, when it is eaten, it does not recognize its masters, but when it is hungry, it cries out, and on receiving food, it is quiet again. That's an interesting one. See, I was also told they don't eat pigs because pigs are, like, literally, they're the bottom feeders in the, in the tank here, and they walk around eating poop and other items that, uh, well, they'd eat anything, so they're not exactly a very, not exactly a healthy, healthy dietary animal to be chomping on, but anyways, that's pretty interesting. Now, neither shalt thou eat, he says, the eagle, nor the hawk, nor the kike, nor the raven, nor the kike nor the raven. Thou shalt not join thyself, he means, to such men who know how to procure food for themselves by labor and sweat, but seize on that of others in their iniquity, and although wearing an aspect of simplicity are on the watch to plunder others, so these birds, while they sit idle and inquire how they themselves may devour the flesh of others, proving themselves pests to all by their wickedness, and thou shalt not eat, he says, the lamprey, or the polypus, or the cuttlefish, he means thou shalt not join thyself, or be like to such men that are ungodly to the end, and are condemned to the death in like manner to as those fishes above a curse float in the deep not swimming on the surface like the rest and made their abode in the mud which lies at the bottom moreover thou shalt not he says eat the hair wherefore thou shalt not be a corrupter of boys nor like unto such because the hair multiplies year by year the places of its conception for as many years as it lives so many it has moreover thou shalt not eat the hyena he means thou shalt not be an adulterer nor a corrupter nor like them that are such wherefore because of that animal annually changes its sex and is at one time male and at another time female And thou shalt not eat the hyena, he means thou shalt not be an adulterer, nor a corrupter, nor be like them that are such. 
So the animals the Lord is telling you, telling the Jews not to eat, he is telling them not to eat because of their personal traits and to be weary of their personal traits and to not take on their personal traits. That's what's kind of being said here. This is interesting because this is also in a church father's book. I can't remember which of the church fathers actually uh, actually wrote this. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Anyways, moreover, he has slightly detested the weasel, for he means thou shalt not be like to those whom here as of committing wickedness with the mouth on account of their uncleanness, nor shall thou be joined to those impure women who commit iniquity with their mouth. For this animal conceives by the mouth. Moses then reissued three doctrines concerning meats with a spiritual significance, but they received them accordingly to fleshly desire as if he had merely spoken of literal meats. Now David, however, comprehends the knowledge of the three doctrines and speaks in like manner. Blessed is the man who hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, even as the fishes refer to. Go into darkness to the depths of the sea, and hath not stood in the way of sinners, even as those who profess to fear the Lord, but go astray like swine, and hath not sat in the seat of scorners. I think that's Psalm, Psalm 1-1. Can't remember. Even as those birds that lie in wait for prey take a full firm grasp of this spiritual knowledge. But Moses says still further, ye shall eat every animal that is cloven footed and ruminant. What does this mean? The ruminant animal denotes him who on receiving food recognizes him and nourishes him and being satisfied by him is visibly made glad. Well spake Moses having respect to the commandment. What then does he mean? What we ought to join ourselves to those that fear the Lord. And those who meditate in their heart on the commandment which they have received, those who have both uttered the judgments of the Lord and observed them, those who know that the meditation is the work of gladness, and those who ruminate upon the word of the Lord. But what means have the cloven footed that the righteous man who also walks in this world yet looks forward to the holy state to come? Behold how well Moses legislated, but how was it possible for them to understand or to comprehend these things? We then rightly understand his commandments, explain them as the Lord intended. For this purpose he ought to circumcise our ears and our hearts that we may understand these things. And that brings us to chapter number 11. Yeah, Revelation 17, 14 tells us, And these shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall conquer them. For he is, Lord of lords, he is, King of kings, and they who are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And God bless. And this is the Study Bible Bible Study, where we study the Bible with Study Bibles. Barnabas number 6.